Good morning, church. Hey, and welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church. The greatest United Methodist Church in the world. Hey, yeah, let's give a big round of applause to God. Hey, that's good. Happy New Year to everyone. I'm so thankful that you are here today. You have canceled all your appointments not to do anything on Sunday morning because you want to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Or you can say you have an appointment with God. I pray that today throughout the service, when we pray together, when we read the scripture, when we hear the sermon, when we sing songs, that God will meet you wherever you are. That your heart is open to receive his blessing, his great teaching, his love, his forgiveness, and that every single minute from this time on, you will grow to love God even more. Amen? Amen. And my name is Watana King. It is my privilege and honor to be your pastor. Also welcome people who are, who are worshiping with us online. I pray that the Spirit of God will reach out to you, will be with you wherever you are. And that throughout the service, even though you are watching it through your TV screen or your uh, camera phone or your, your smartphone, that you still feel the love of God wherever you are. And so friends, without further ado, are you ready to worship? Yeah. Um, let me do this. I think um, the Bible say we have to clear ourselves first from our friends. We have, to, we have to forgive our brothers and sisters before we come and worship our Lord Jesus Christ, right? And in order to do that, we know, the, we know how we go, right? We say, I love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Let's say it again. One, two, three. I love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen? All right, friends. Are you ready to worship? And now I would like to invite the acolytes to come down. Friends, please be reminded that the light of Christ is with us. The Spirit of God is with us. The Bible said when Jesus baptized you, he will baptize you by spirit and fire. And may this fire remind you the love and the forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I would like to invite our liturgists, our awesome, young, handsome liturgists, to help us in time of worship. Why don't we give them, him a very big round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I'm go, I'll be leading call to worship. I'll be, leading, I'll be reading the leader part, and you guys will be reading the people in bold letters. Our God is a God of power and strength. Our God is a God of majesty and awe. Our God is a God of glory and wonder. Our God calls us each by name. And I'd like um, everyone to please stand for, if you are able, for our first hymn. Please join me in the spirit song. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you and His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let Him have the things that hold you and His Spirit like a dove will descend. Come and 
seated and um, now for the Lord's Prayer please allow the Hmong language to portion to begin first oh we don't have that oh well uh, the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, today's scripture is from Luke chapter 3. Verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. Please stand as you are able. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I am is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork in his, is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his garnery. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. I am so very excited about uh, young people, uh, young children, uh, young adults, uh, youth group. It's just amazing. Last Sunday, we celebrated um, uh, New Year, um, a youth party. We, we bought lots and lots of food. They actually had three servings. They had lunch, and then they had uh, between lunch and dinner, and then they had dinner before they go home. Uh, they were playing uh, basketball, volleyball, and the most important part of it was we inducted a new member into our youth group, and that is Rihanna. Um, that's amazing. We already have 13 people. We inducted one more. Now we have 14 uh, as a member of our youth group. I uh, want to see Michael more often to be a part of it. Uh, the, a few of them are sitting behind there and in the front row there. It's just amazing. You know, it, I'm so excited to see. Uh, yesterday, if you noticed, we came, a few of us, many of us, the girls and the boys came to put down the Christmas trees. That's a big job, friends. You need like a 25-foot ladder to get up there and get all the ornaments down, you know. Teacher Connie and, 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 and Laura was helping, leading, guiding, make sure we put it in the right place. More importantly, we just had the shed installed right behind our bungalow. That big round of applause. Good news, friends. So now all the stuff that needs to be stored can be stored properly in, an, in a manly, in a good, orderly manner in the storage shed, all right? Um, I pray that we don't have, we don't give away too many keys, only to important people, so they can uh, use the space properly, right? Because no matter how big the storage is, if we don't take care of it, it will be overflowed very soon before we know it. So it's just a good step moving forward. Um, our bungalow look, uh, look like it's gonna be uh, uh, worked on. Uh, I'm gonna have a meeting with uh, general contractor with Kathy this coming uh, Tuesday to get even a better estimate to see what needs to be done in there. And friends, my goal is that by June, we will be able to celebrate our new youth center, uh, not new, but a renovated new youth center 
that will be able to accommodate our youth group so that they will be able to, to be nurtured through Christ's teaching through our church. Aren't you not excited? Hey, that boy, 2022 is going to be a great year. Thank you so much for your support. Continue to pray for us. There's a lot of obstacles, man. lots and lots of obstacles. And I pray that uh, we will work uh, with forgiveness, with understanding, that we will work in a timely manner, that it should not take us 20 years to finish this project, right? So that we will be able to do this while we still can, right? And it's amazing. I don't know. I didn't prepare to say this, but it just, it, I just feel it. It's so good. All right, friends. Uh, let me start with a joke. <laughs> In, in a church, a gentleman uh, decided to follow Jesus. And uh, uh, John would like her to change his life. And, and he went to the pastor, and the pastor uh, went with him through the class and everything. And now he's baptized. After he's baptized, the pastor said to John, John, you are a new creation. The old one is gone. No more alcohol for you. Your new name is Gary. John was so happy. He left church. His name is now Gary. He went home. He opened his pantry. He take his Costco bottle of uh, vodka. He brought it out. Got a baptismal font outside. He baptized the, uh, the, the vodka uh, uh, bottle. He take it back up and said, Vodka, you are a new creation. The old one is gone. Your new name is Green Tea. <laughs> All right, friends. Let us be in the attitude of prayer. I invite you all to find your seat on the floor. Rest comfortably wherever you are. Put your feet on your floor, adjust your hips. Put your hands on your laps, close your eyes, drop your shoulders from your chin, relax all your facial muscles, breathe deeply and slowly, and now let us spend a few minutes in quiet time, in a time of silent prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, Lord, and be with us as we are seeking your help. And love us, Lord, as we need more love. Each and every one of us would like to be more loved by you. Lord, thank you so much for your forgiveness. Thank you for calling us all together into your kingdom. Thank you for allowing us to understand what it means to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, thank you for your forgiveness, which is such a great example for us to live our life with abundant grace, with forgiveness, that we will love one another and there's nothing we can do about it. That we will be able to come together with one mission that you have called us to do. That this community of faith will continue to grow and become a welcoming place for others. That our lives will be transformed. That many others will also be able to experience the love, the forgiveness, the hope in you. Lord, as we are about to, to focus on the word. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your sight. Because you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Such a wonderful picture, eh? When you see this, Jesus coming down to Jordan River, raising up his hand, looking up to the sky because 
the sky is open. The Spirit of God descending upon him. And the voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. I am so well pleased. Wow. Have you been to Jordan River? Look at the next picture here. This is a picture that I took when I went to Israel in 2020. Um, right before the pandemic, right, right before the, the shutdown. My wife and I was there. That's the situation, right? The other side, as we were looking into it, this is uh, the side of Jordan. And I was standing on the, the uh, Israel side. It's just amazing. It's eyes opening, friends. Just um, like when, you, when I was there, I was trying to see, imagine the fact that John the Baptist was there. Many people were walking and following. And they heard this sound. The sound of, of, of this one guy coming out of the wilderness and call everybody to repent. Repent. The kingdom of God is near. And then they were looking, what is going on here? There's this one gentleman coming down, right? Walking into the water and allowed John the Baptist to baptize him. Can you imagine if you were the visitor there? You were walking by the river and you see crowd of people assembling, doing something that is spectacular, that is magnificent. And then you, maybe, you, you may hear the, 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 the sound of thunder. The thunderbolt is rumbling around and the sky starts to open, split up. The light of Christ is coming down from heaven and you are now in awe. You are like, what is going on here? Are you going to walk into this community and listen to what's going on? Or are you going to run away from it? Because now, all of a sudden, you see the Spirit of God in the form of a dove descending upon this one gentleman who is standing in the water and praying to God. And then in the word of, the, of John the Baptist in verse 16, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. But the one who is more powerful than I is coming. And he is saying this because in the, in the beginning, previously, people thought he was the Messiah. People thought that John the Baptist was the Messiah. And he is saying, I am not the Messiah. I'm nowhere close to the Messiah. In fact, the Messiah is the one who is more powerful. He is coming. What a great message of hope. Think about it, friends. Sometimes life is very tough. And I feel you, especially during this pandemic time. We're not over it yet, right? We still hear about this Omicron variant, you know, and now there's a new variant called the Flurona, I think. It's a flu combined with Corona and now it becomes Flurona. It has another impact on the world population. Ruby, as a, as a nurse in our community, keep reporting to us that the, the, the emergency room is overflowed. There's no enough staff. Half of the, uh, half of the nurse have been affected by the, by the virus. Not, not enough traveling nurse to help us out. Recently, I also read another article that talking about the, the the compassion fatigue. You know, like as a nurse, as a healthcare worker, you, you are compassionate toward people, right? Anybody coming to take care, to get care, you want to offer care with compassion. But they are now at the point of, of compassion fatigue. It's very interesting. Such a dangerous time. But let me tell you this. The one who is very mighty and powerful and loving and forgiving and healing is here with us. We just celebrated his birthday. Emmanuel, God is with us, friend. We are here in the presence of God. And God is always there for us. I love to say, when you cannot stand, 
me. Kneel down in times of prayer. Go to God because he is your comforter. He is your healer. He is your provider. He will bless you. He will make you victor. Life will be so much more meaningful and easier to move on when you have him with you. Even John the Baptist going through life, learning about the scripture, trying to bring people to the kingdom of God. And he know he cannot do this by himself. But the spirit of God, but the one who is to come is more mighty for than who is. Because that one, even John is not worthy to untie the tongue of his sandals. He will baptize you with the spirit and fire, friends. Allow the spirit of God to baptize you. Knowing that your baptism, now, now I would like to invite you to remember your baptism. When you were baptized, the spirit of God was with you. And allow his fire to burn you from the inside out. So that you will be able to be bold, to be courageous, to bring the gospel and the hope and the story of Christ to the world. Because you will go out and say, I love to tell the story. The story of Christ, the story of his love, the story that will transform the world. Because you know the story has transformed you. The story has made you different. Because by the miracle of God, you are now seeing something new. Friends, let me tell you this. I can't wait to see what 2022 have in store for us. The best is yet to come. Can you tell everybody the best is yet to come? Let's go. Tell everybody the best is yet to come. Looking for year 2022, friends. It's going to be fun together. And I pray that you will love this community and that you will come together to do this. Verse 21, when all the people were being baptized, in the other account, all the people were not mentioned. In the book of Luke, all the people is mentioned. When all other people were baptized, Jesus was baptized too. Why did Jesus need to be baptized? Why? He is perfect. He is clean. He led very good life. Why was he baptized? I think the symbol of baptism is the fact that you decide to be obedient to God. Whatever God called you to do, even Jesus himself walked into Jordan River and tell John to do what needs to be done. He is very obedient. Because he know that I am going to do this mission, even, even that this mission is so dirty, is so hard, is so messed up. I will actually give up my life for this mission. But I am willing to walk down into this river and be a part of this community. I love how the scriptures say, all the peoples, all the people are also baptized. Right? Baptism meaning what? You're walking into the community of faith, into the community of believers, into the community of people whose life has been transformed, has been called out from the darkness into light, has been called out out of the life of trouble, but into the life of blessing, has been called out from the life of disparity, but now is living in the life of hope according to the teaching and the guidance of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are baptized, we belong to this community of faith. Look at one another right now, friend. Look at one another and smile at each other. Remember each other. You see this? This is the community of friends, the community of faith that is there to be with one another. And yes, sometimes we even argue with ourselves, right? Let alone being with the community. But please remember that God is with us. And so keep telling ourselves, keep telling each other that I love you, that Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Let's follow the mission of Jesus and let's put our differences aside. Don't, don't let the little minor detail to, to, to kill us. You know, when we are thinking about big projects, what do they say? They say, there's an English term I forgot about. The, de the, the devil is in the details, right? 
Oh yeah, we have great projects to do together. But then when, we, when we're trying to accomplish this project, ooh, these details come out, right? It's like you open a can of worms, right? And these little things come out, oh man, now you need to do what? And you, have, you need great problem solving skills, right? In order to make sure big project can happen. Once again, I don't want this project to last 20 years, okay? Let's do this within six months. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. But, but here, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. Remember your baptism. You were baptized into the community of faith. And very important, the next part is, and as he was praying, heaven was open. As he was praying, heaven was open. Very interesting, if you look at the book of Luke, in the book of Luke, and if you, took, if you look at the, the big important account of Jesus, Luke always mentioned before Jesus did anything miracle, anything big, he always prayed first. Like here before he was baptized, he prayed and then the open, the, 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 the heaven of God is open. Even when Jesus, before he, he died, he prayed. And then the world become dark. Then he took his last breath. Prayer, friends. How many of us are very adamant about our prayer? If we call ourselves Christian, how many times do we trust God in time of prayer? Come to God in time of prayer. Not just only come to God in time of prayer during Sunday school, or during Sunday service, or during your Bible study. How about in your personal time? Are you very good at it? How can you do it better? Do you have appointment with God every day? Maybe five minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Just go to God in time of prayer. Allow yourself to be whole so your spirit can catch up with your body. What does Bill Graham said? People ask him, what is your key to success? He said, I got three things. The most important thing, which is number one, is prayer. And the second most important thing is prayer. And the third most important thing, you know what God, he was going to say, right? Is prayer. Right? Let us pray, friend. I have been asking you, begging you, put my family, my name in your prayer list. Put your church name. Put your church family. Put your church friends' names in your prayer list. Pray for each and every body of us. Pray for each and every one of us here. Pray for one another. God loves to hear our prayer. When we come to God, God will do the job. There's another word that says, when you do the work, you do the work. But when you pray, God works. Yeah. When you pray, God works. So let's pray for one another, friends. When he prayed, heaven was open. The Holy Spirit descended on him, Jesus, in the bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. You know when I read this Luke chapter 3 verse 22. I see the presence of the Trinity. Many times we're trying to understand what does Trinity mean. But Trinity is showed up to us in the Lord's baptism. Trinity is here in front of us in the form of Jesus receiving the Holy Spirit in the form of the dove. And then at the same time, you hear the voice of God from heaven saying, this is my son whom I am well pleased. You see Trinity in us? Many times when we need God, the Trinity when we understand the Trinity of God, it makes it complete. It's like a tripod. Right? It needs three legs to stand together. If it's two, it wobble, it's going to fall down. Right? And many times when we are trying to understand how are we created, who created everything, who is the master of everything, then God the creator, God Father, God the Father, is the creator that makes so much sense. But then God is not just only out there, big, omniscient, omnipotent, all that that we cannot feel. Because God is also in form of his son, Jesus Christ. Somebody whom we can call friend. Somebody can we, whom we can call brother. Somebody whom we can call Lord. But at the same time, 
this God has experienced what exactly we've gone through. Our pain, our suffering, our betrayal, anything that life is given to us, Jesus understands exactly what it is. When we pray to Jesus, we understand that Jesus understands what we are going through. And he is our comforter. He is next to us. With Jesus the Son, we understand the forgiveness. What a friend we have in Jesus. Somebody who can die for us all so that we all are free from our sin. So that we are now call ourselves new life, new creation. Go out to the world and proclaim this gospel to the world. Jesus, show us what it means when it's time to forgive. Right? And then God would not make any sense if you know that Jesus is gone. God, the creator, is somewhere out there. When I have problem, who do I go to? But Jesus said, as I'm, I'm now going to heaven to prepare a place for you. But when I'm gone, the comforter, the Holy Spirit will be here with you. The advocate is going to be here with you. We know that the Spirit of God is with us wherever we are. God is not just only out there somewhere over there in the past. But God is with us in every moment. Look at this, friend. As you are entering into a time of baptism, as you are remembering the baptism, you remember the Trinity God who is there for you and have been working for you ever since. I cannot, I have to show you this story, this picture. Because the next picture here is, I, I think I saw you once, right? That, the, the picture of me, uh, my, my day when I was baptized. Then my group of people who were baptized on the same day. All of them are now, you know, uh, doing a lot of good things, changing the world in Cambodia. The, the girl in red, uh, she is met, she's married to a, an American guy. She is now living in, in Oregon. Yeah, I remember that day, friends. When I decided to be baptized, when I was walking down into that river, the band was playing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. And the song kept going. The band kept singing as people were lining down. And I see my pastor in the water raising up his hand and praying out to God and ask people to make sure they make that important decision. Are you sure you want to follow Jesus? Do you know what baptism means? When you go into the water, your old life is gone. When you are back up, you are now living with Christ. Oh, I remember that day. It sounds like Baptist church, huh? Yeah, because I was a Baptist then. <laughs> exactly, they told me that baptism means a lot, right? They don't baptize you until you make that important decision, right? I, I belonged to a Southern Baptist church then. And it was amazing, you know, I feel it. As I'm walking, oh, like people were singing, and the crowd, and the most important part is this. The people who are walking by. They were wondering what is going on with this group. And then one of them speak to another. Oh, this is the Christians. The group that follow Jesus. That's what they always do wherever they are. Wherever they are, when they decide to make the decision, they come to the Jordan River, they come to the river, they come to be baptized. It's like the initiation. It's like now they belong to the group. It's like now it is them, you know, they've been initiated into the body of Christ, into the fellowship of believers. And they're going to go out and tackle different problems around the world. And that is our identity, friends. We at the United Methodist Church, we really strongly encourage that everybody should be baptized. And the baptism should happen if you've never been baptized before, the day when you decide to become the member of the church. The baptism is like, wow, a sign that you are now belong to the community of faith. Like Ivana said, if you have not been baptized yet, please come reach out to me. 
But I hope that all of you here has been baptized. And that you still remember your baptism. That the baptism of the Lord is always with you. It reminds you to be obedient to God. It reminds you that this is the step of the new beginning. The beginning to what? The beginning to the mission that God has given to us. Jesus, right after his baptism, he went out and changed the world. Miracle happened. He chose his disciples. He do great things. And the life, life has been changed so far. And that's what we are supposed to do. Learn from the example of Christ. Be obedient to God. Belong to the community of faith. And now we come together and go change the world. All of us can do it. You probably have heard me saying so many times, none of us is better than all of us. When we all come together, we can move mountains, amen? When we come together, we can change the world. When we come together, the world will be so curious. What's going on in this place? If you go back to my first sermon on Jan July 4th, what did I say? I want this to be a place of a baker. Like, like a bakery, that we are now baking love. That everybody who is driving down, coming by to the, to the treehouse school or whatever they do, they will smell love going through in this building. What's going on here? There's always activity. People always party. People are having fun. What is going on? And they're so jealous. They're so curious. And they want to belong because this is the community of love. And Christ is the example for us. Amen? In our United Methodist Church, baptism is one of the two sacraments. We only have two sacraments. Why only two? Well, number one is baptism. Number two is Holy Communion. Why these two only? Because in different churches, they have like seven uh, sacraments. Some churches have 12 sacraments. We only have two because these are the only two that Jesus did. Number one is baptism. And number two is Holy Communion. Now, friends, when you come in, you were given the communion element. We are back to the pre wrap elements. Uh, yes, there are some down the, the lack side of it, of the pre wrap but because of the, the spread of the COVID, I just want to make sure we don't want to touch each other's stuff, food so much, right? So let, let's take a break from our regular element for a while. But now we're going to do the pre wrap But when we do the pre wrap I would like to invite you to take out your, your Methodist hymnal. Let us go to the uh, traditional uh, Methodist uh, liturgy here. Go to page number seven. Let's make use of wonderful uh, um, <clears throat> a hymnal. Go to page number seven. I will go to the bottom of the line, uh, the other paragraph uh, from the invitation. Christ our Lord invite to his table all who love him. Who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to move on to page number nine and start with the great, uh, with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You form us into your image and breathe into us the breath of life. When we turn away and our love fails, your love remains steadfast. You deliver us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, 
and blessed is your son Jesus Christ your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives and recovering the sight to, to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that a time had come when you would save your people he healed the sick fed the hungry and ate with sinners by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit when the lord jesus ascended he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and holy spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us he took bread and gave thanks to you broke the bread and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me when the supper was over he took the cup gave thanks to you gave it to the disciples and said drink from this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me and so in the remembrance of these your mighty acts in jesus christ we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith christ has died christ is risen christ will come again pour out your holy spirit on earth gather here as on and on these gifts of bread and wine make them be for us the body and the blood of christ that we may be for the world the body of christ redeemed by his blood by your spirit make us one with christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through jesus christ with the holy spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. If you have not partake the Holy Communion element, I ask that you will open the first layer, open it nicely, make sure you don't spill the, the, the juice. The first wrap is the vapor here. And when you eat, please remember the body of Christ broken for you. After the dinner, Jesus gives you a cup of wine. Drink from this cup, remember the blood of Christ has been shed for you. Thank you also for your love and your support for our church. I pray that you will continue to support our church. You can write your check to our church um, or you can donate online. Uh, friends online who are worshiping with us online, if you want to support the ministry of this church, go to our website or just aim your um, uh, camera to the QR code and that it will lead you into our website that you can donate online as well. Thank you so much. And now let us say the prayer of thanksgiving uh, together. Please join us in the prayer. The next one. Next page. Gracious God, we come today with joys of your baptism. We come with praise for your glory. We come with gratitude for your love. As we offer these gifts to you, send your spirit upon us, that our hands and us may do your work in the world. As we offer our lives to you, bless us with your strength, that we may join with you the work of the blessing of peace throughout the world. Amen. Now let us stand if you are come to be able for our doxology. While you're still standing, please hear the benediction. May the Spirit of God be with you as you leave this place. Remember your baptism. God has called you into the mission. Be obedient. Join the community of faith. And may His love and His forgiveness and His grace be with you wherever you are. May you be strengthened as you go out and 
change this world one person at a time. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God bless you, friends. I will see you all next week, if not earlier. God bless you. And say bye to also people uh, worshiping with us online. God bless you.